Welcome to Coco Beach, famous for its rocket launches, stunning sandy beaches and surfing swell. However, this weekend it's not surfboards in the water, but powerboats. And not just any kind of powerboat. We've got the world's best powerboat races from around the globe, coming together for the first time to battle it out in a series of races across the United States. There's lots of familiar faces from the world of powerboat racing, including multiple world champion Steve Curtis. But this weekend, there's one famous face you might not expect to see here, trying powerboat racing for the first time. Travis Pastrana is going to learn how to drive a boat for the first time in his life, I believe. Well, I've, I've driven a boat, <laughs> just, just not one that like, goes this fast. All right, so we got a little bit of a learning curve maybe to get over. Uh, one of my best friends, uh, Britt Lilly, kept talking about how I haven't done anything until I sat in a race boat. Offshore power boat. Um, all the crazy stories my dad has is always has to do with Art Lilly, uh, Britt's dad. So always wanted to get in the boat, but our lives kind of went different directions. And he said, you have to come down to Florida. It's an amazing event, uh, thunder on the beach. I was like, you know what? The only way I'm gonna come down there is if I'm driving. And uh, Kevin got stuck with me. <laughs> I was pretty pumped up. I'm a little nervous at first. I'm a little nervous right now, but I'm still pretty excited. You know, I'm just, I'm 98% scared and 2% excited, or, or maybe the opposite way around, I'm not really sure. This boat is gonna be running in Super V Extreme. We run 800 horsepower uh, GM blocks. We're gonna be running probably between 110 and 120 miles an hour. Um, with the sea conditions tomorrow, we should probably have maybe two to three foot seas. So uh, the whole key is us to find a rhythm and we're gonna to try to get up and get on top of the waves and just go as fast as we can. Honestly, this is gonna be an absolute blast. I have no idea what to expect, but it's gonna be fun. Um, hopefully we don't end up doing the, the capsize drill. We've already, <laughs> already done that in the pool, so uh, passed my swim test. So hopefully we won't be holding our breath or anything and yeah, we'll, we'll be good. <laughs> we'll catch up with Travis later to find out how his first ever drive of a powerboat went. But first, let's take a look at the action-packed schedule. We've got three races and six exciting classes of boats to bring you. Race one will feature the supercharged Supercats. Race two will feature Travis Pastrana in the Superstock, SVX and Pro Stock V classes. And in our third race of the show, we'll get to see the ultimate class in powerboat racing, class one, with an international field of highly competitive drivers and throttlemen. And for this class, there's news of an important change to the boats, which is going to make the racing closer than ever. My name's Gary Stray, and I'm the crew chief for the Miss Geico Offshore Racing Team. Well, this year's a, a very exciting year for the sport in general. We've not only got American boats and teams here, but we've got teams from all over the world, Australia, Dubai, very exciting for us after racing Americans for so many years to make this a real world event. We're running a new style engine, which is the 1100 Mercury QCV4 engine. Um, and it's made specifically for this competition. Every boat that we're running against has the same power, the same RPM. Um, it's a more reliable package. Last year we were running in the region of 2,000 horsepower and engine, which makes the boat very, very fast, but super unreliable as well, which meant there was many boats that weren't finishing. So it, it was a race of attrition rather than a real race. So this year, everybody's on a level playing field with these 1100s, which is gonna make it really interesting when we get out on the water. Here with the Miss Geico boat, we've been working very, very hard over the winter knowing that we were going to have uh, less horsepower and a level playing field with, with uh, horsepower and we've been doing a lot of tweaks to the actual boat itself so there's no longer an advantage to be gained of playing with engines now it's all with boat combination propeller gear ratio and the setup of the boat and of course the throttle man and driver are now becoming way way more important than they ever were I welcome the change, it's good. Um, I, I think it's gonna encourage more teams to come in. It doesn't become a money war anymore of who spends the most on the engine development wins the race. This is really about skill set. And um, I just turn my engineering skills away from the engine and now more onto the boat with the gear ratios, propellers, and, and the boat setup, uh, working that out with Steve and doing the best we can. The 
the 10th annual Thunder on Cocoa Beach is the brainchild of Kerry Bartlett. We started this race in 2010, and uh, this is a, a very hard event to put on. We have a lot of uh, volunteers. We do this for the community. We fill the hotels in, in Cocoa Beach, and uh, we do a lot for charity, the Freedom Fighters. And uh, this year's event is special because of the new race organizations, OPA and P1. Uh, they've come together very nicely to produce, uh, help us produce a, a tremendous event for the community. This year it's going to be very competitive. We have a lot of new race teams that have never been to Cocoa Beach, so there's going to be some, some surprises for some of the guys. We always like to say that you have to wear your big boy pants to race in Cocoa Beach because we're offshore in the waves. Uh, the uh, safety and medical team has been set up to really handle uh, anything that comes up this year, and we're looking forward to some real fast speeds on Sunday. And the event got off to a great start with a packed downtown block party. The Friday night block party was a highlight for the fans, but now to the reason the drivers are here and the serious business of racing. First up, we've got the supercharged Supercats. Here's Martin Sanborn to explain the class specifications. Thanks, Kevin. Let's take a look at Supercat. These are canopied catamarans from 34 to 42 feet in length. They have a 12-foot beam and a maximum 66-inch tunnel. They all weigh 9,600 pounds, and they're powered by a 750 horsepower, 510 cubic inch, naturally aspirated engine, highly regulated with a 9.5 to 1 compression ratio, single carburetor, 4,500 series dominator, maximum bore and stroke requirements, and they all are required to run the same cylinder head. There's boats here from across the country and international competitors as well. A little closer to home, Billy Moff and his WHM motorsport boat, based in Port Jefferson, New York, have been competing in the series ever since it started. WHM's been around for 40 years. Oldest team here racing. Uh, Jay's with me probably every bit of, what, 12, 13 years? 13 years. Got into the sport a long time ago, fell in love with it, been here ever since. I think it's great that we're all getting under one association now. I mean, you can see with the boat count here, we got a lot of quality teams and stuff. I think it's going to be a real exciting year. Our race shop is right here in Titusville, so we test down here. We like the whole town. I think it's been like 10 years we've been here, so we love coming down here and race. When I come to a race, you know, I don't get myself worked up to the point where I get myself crazy. Listen, to me, I'm here to have fun. If I win, it's a bonus. If I don't, hey, I came to have fun. Another team hoping to kick off their P1 OPA Championship campaign in style is Myrick Coyle and his performance boat center team from Lake of the Ozarks. So we got a race here in Cocoa Beach, uh, beginning uh, race for the OPA season, for the P1. Uh, really excited about that due to the fact that we have two brand new boats uh, that were brought here, never been in a race, either one of them. So we get to see how close they are. Well, we will be the stock class, which is the catamarans with the outboards on it. And then we will be the super cat class, which is the spec class uh, large catamarans that you know are capable of 130, 140 miles per hour. As far as boat count, it looks good. As for, I've walked around the pits. Uh, and there's a lot of fierce competitors in that class. When it comes to the stock class, there's actually more boats. And you know, it's a spec class too. So anytime you have the same rules, it really keeps the racing tight. So it's, it's really nice. Three years ago, it was pretty calm. We could see speeds of close to 130 miles per hour. Two years ago, uh, top speed of maybe 115. So you can see how water conditions can change, you know, 15, 20 miles per hour on the boat pretty easily. I'm hoping for a little bump because it's a big equalizer, well, if there's waves. I know we're not the fastest boat at this point, but maybe if it's rough, we can uh, be up front. Now, here's our race commentator, Martin Sanborn, to talk us through the course. Thanks, Kevin. Let's take a look at the race course here in Cocoa Beach. Clockwise rotation, very long lap for these boats, just over five miles, a long two and a half miles straight away along the beach, up to one, two, three, and four, back from north to south into five, six, seven, and eight, and then they cross the start finish line about halfway through the course. Well, that's the teams and the course. Join us after the break for some of the best Supercat racing you'll ever see.
Welcome back to Cocoa Beach. It's time for our first race, the Supercats. So let's hand straight over to Martin Sanborn and Mike Uwalski for your race commentary. Thank you, Kevin. As we go on board Grandel, they're getting ready to go. That is Chris Grant and Billy Moore in the boat. Billy Moore, a very experienced throttleman. And now we're on board MCON. These guys, another very experienced team. Look for them to be tough right out of the gate. Martin, tell me, what's going through your mind as you're getting ready to go with this start? You know, you're getting strapped into these boats. Cocoa Beach is traditionally a very rough water race, but it's laid down a little bit compared to what everybody's expecting. So I think you got a little bit of apprehension like you do anytime you get ready to go racing. It looks like we've got a green flag. We are underway here in Cocoa Beach. Well, I'll tell you, what a great day to be here in Cocoa Beach for the 10th annual Thunder on Cocoa as we go on board now with WHM. WHM on the outside. That is AMH immediately off to their right on the inside was Performance Boat Center, but jumping out to an early lead is Pro Floors, and they got AMH right off their left hip. Now, Pro Floors, looks like their hull is a little bit shorter than the rest of the boats out there. Uh, well, it's a different hull. That one is an MTI. The skaters are what MCON and AMH is a skater. The Performance Boat Center boat right behind the Pro Floors boat is also an MTI, but it's a little bit longer as they make their way into the bumpiest part of the course. On the north end, they make that left-hand turn, and there's been a hole there all day long. Let's talk a little bit about the different OEMs that uh, we're going to see here in this class. Well, all the engines are the same, so the manufacturer OEMs are really where the battle shake out between MTI and Skater. Those are the two big Caterbran manufacturers here. As we look at our battle for second place right now, the Performance Boat Center on the outside of them is AMH and MCON getting it loose behind them. And we go right back on board WHM as they're trying to catch up to the rest of the fleet. Yeah, I'll tell you what, taking a look uh, through their canopy, you can see they had a host of riders on their left flank. They did, and they are way off of what their normal pace is. That boat loves rough water. Jay Muller and Billy Moff, veterans of the sport, is on board AMH. And they're trying to run down the leaders. They're currently in third place behind Pro Floors and Performance Boat Center. Performance Boat Center just on the inside. That is a brand new boat for this team. They literally only have a couple hours of seat time in this boat since getting it rigged at Lake of the Ozarks. And right now we have MCON challenging AMH as they're trying to get around and move themselves into third place, a side-by-side -side battle. Now, you were talking a little bit uh, earlier about MCON and Performance Boat having a special relationship. The MCON boat's actually maintained by the Performance Boat Center, and these guys all work together as teams. But uh, that boat in particular, a very close relationship between Performance Boat Center and AMH as we look on the front straightaway heading north. Our leaders, Pro Floors, our team from New Zealand, they are out front. Yeah, the Kiwis are definitely killing it here today. A new throttle in that boat, Grant Bruggerman. He's another guy that's been in the sport for a long time, and he took over some of the rigging responsibilities, taking care of that boat as well as throttling it. And we look at that battle, MCON, right now. They're on the outside as they're getting past AMH as they head towards turn one, two, and three down by the pier. Boy, I'll tell you, you can see, you can say that it's not that rough out there. However, if you take a look through these canopies, these guys are still taking a beating. No doubt. And the nice thing about a catamaran is you get such a smooth ride compared to a V-bottom. I'm a V-bottom guy, and uh, you're kind of getting pounded in a V-bottom, but uh, all my buddies that drive the cats tell you it's like riding a magic carpet. You see what a nice smooth ride AMH has. And that's the bumpiest part of the race course is you're turning right into a head seat as AMH closed the distance a little bit on MCON, but MCON carried that speed around the outside, and MCON now is going to have the inside lane when they get to the dog leg. We take a look at your race leader, Pro Floors, on the NZ11. Again, straight out of New Zealand, Martin. You know, these guys have never looked back. They got a great jump, but that battle is still going on for second and third. AMH just behind MCON as we look at that aft view. Here's the view from AMH. They have the inside right now as they head towards the south end of the race course. They're come up, coming up on the dog leg. Then they've got that right-hand turn around five, six, seven, and 8. Martin, tell me, how difficult is it as a driver to run through the prop wash? Well, it's a real problem. The prop wash is one thing, but you got that rooster tail covering your canopy, and Johnny Tomlinson and Myra Coyle didn't give MCON anywhere to go. They had to go through the rooster tail. They're taking water over the top. Driving through that prop wash actually slows you down, though, because you lose efficiency as we go on board with Grandel. Yeah, Grandel look like they're on a Sunday drive on a Saturday afternoon out there. They are really relaxed, and right now it looks like MCON has gotten past Performance Boat Center, but they are on the shore side. And as we go back on board with Grandel, this is Chris Grant's first race, currently running in sixth place. 
And here's performance boat center. They are just a little bit ahead of MCON, but we have a great battle. MCON coming around on the outside. They've got some clean water, but they've got the longer way to go around that race course. Performance boat center on the inside right now. Performance boat center trying to take the shortest distance. And you see them getting that air. They hit that bump as they go into that head seat, but they come out ahead. MCON carrying a little bit of speed on the outside. Let's see how they do on the back straight as we go back to our leader, Pro Floors. Yeah, you take a look there along the back straightaway. Quite the flotilla here in Cocoa Beach. The fans coming from far and wide to descend upon Cocoa this weekend. WHM Motorsports, way off the pace from where uh, Jay Muller and Billy Moff are used to running. That boat really likes rough water, but it's not as rough as they thought it was going to be. And we go back to our battle with Pro Floors and MCON and on board with MCON. Yeah, MCON driving one heck of a race right now, currently sitting in that second place. Again, pro flooring ahead of them and performance boat right behind them, pushing them. MCON getting past Performance Boat Center, and they are running just really loose. They're putting that thing on kill to get around the race course. Performance Boat Center has the inside lane right now. Myra Coyle trying to square off, take the short distance around the race course, but they are now side by side. Performance Boat Center has a little bit of an edge as they make their way around the final turn on the south end of the race course. MCON goes way wide. You saw how tightly pro, uh, Performance Boat Center squared that turn off, but MCON carried that speed. They are now side by side with Performance Boat Center. Well, I'll tell you, definitely Definitely some great racing here in the Supercat class, and normally you don't see the Supercats this close, Martin. It, it's really amazing. This is the first race of the season. These guys are out here, and they are running deck to deck with the exception of our leader right now. Pro Floor is way out front. Grant Bruggerman new to that team, and now MCON has got a commanding lead over Performance Boat Center strongly into second place, and they're now going to control the lane. Oh, AMH has a problem. That's Anthony Smith on the back of the boat. He obviously thinks it's something he can fix as he opens up the hatch to see if it's something he can do to get that boat up and running. That's going to allow WHM Motorsports to advance a position. They are now into fourth place. Yeah, a tough break there for AMH, but uh, works to the benefit right now of WHM. Right now, Anthony Smith looks like he thinks he's got it solved. He's closing the hatch. He's going to get himself back up to the cockpit, see if he can get that motor fired and get back into this race. Well, I'll tell you what, they could really use the points here. This being the first race, you definitely want to finish. You don't want to get a DNF on race number one of 2019. That's also allowed Grandel to move up a point, too, as they get past AMH, and AMH did get it back up and running. There they go. That is Aaron Hope and Anthony Smith in AMH. Well, glad to see AMH is back up and in the race. But look at this, Martin. Whoa, we've got a battle coming up for first. MCON is now challenging Pro Floors coming up on the inside. You see how they're just running that boat loose. Now you look, you see the Pro Floors sees that they're coming, trying to put the hammer down. But on the inside is MCON. They have the inside lane, and they now see that they're within striking distance of Pro Floors. Well, if they're going to strike, now is the time to do it as we head toward the close of this one here. Only a couple more laps to go, but that front straightaway, Pro Floors absolutely picked up some speed over opened up that gap again, but they know for certain they got MCON all over their tail. And back on board with uh, Grandel, and uh, Grandel seems to be having some problems as AMH now able to get past Grandel. We look at third place right now, Performance Boat Center, as they watch the battle ahead of them between MCON and Pro Floors, and that spray coming over the top of the boat, that is coming from Pro Floors. The MCON boat getting hosed down as he's trying to find a lane around the outside of Pro Floors. Yeah, looking like he's not finding any clean water out there whatsoever. This is where we're going to see just how aggressive it is. You'd ask what it's like driving through that prop wash. The thing is, if they get too close and drive up the top of that rooster tail, a little actually, the boat will actually drive up the top of it and cause a blowover situation. So these guys have to be very conscious as they're coming up on those rooster tails. MCON on the outside, Pro Floors on the inside as they make their way on that back straightaway. And Pro Floors really seems to be hooked up out there. Tell me, do you know what type of prop they're using? Well, they're, most of them are using a five-blade Mercury prop. You also see herrings out there. Those are the two main propellers to see on these boats. But propeller is that major selection the teams do before the race, and that's one of those closely guarded secrets that they just don't tell anybody what they ran. Well, as we come around to the final lap, it looks like MCON's going to try to make a move. They dive through the rooster tail to the inside, Mikey. They're going to see if they can get up along pro floors before they get to that start-finish line. It looks like it's going to be a drag race to that start-finish line, Martin. MCON on the inside, Pro Floors on the outside. Both boats running loose as they come through, but MCON is about two boat lengths behind Pro Floors. Pro Floors looks like they're holding on. MCON, you can see them bobbling, getting loose as they fly through the wake, and they are on their way towards the start finish line, but it looks like Pro Floors is going to hold them off. Pro Floors, checkered flag coming out. Again, a two boat length lead 
And uh, I'll tell you, if you're MCON, you just really got to be disappointed at this point. But MCON ran a great race. You saw them getting loose, and that's it. Checkered flag is out. The win unofficially goes to Pro Flores, followed by MCON. What a great race here in Cocoa Beach with Pro Flores taking the win. Let's take a look at the official results here for Supercat USA. In first place, Pro Floors. Second was Encon in third place. Performance Boat Center, WHM took fourth. AMH Motorsports took fifth. And Grandel rounded out your top six with CJ Grant Racing. We went out there. We still weren't 100% confident that we had the right setup. Um, you know, the old story, the flag drops, the it stops. And, uh, you know, we took off down the, uh, down the straightaway. And uh, we started feeling fairly comfortable when we started knocking them off uh, as we headed down the straightaway. Uh, we knew the job hadn't been done then, so uh, we still had a lot of work to do. And uh, as you saw during the race, uh, they were still sneaking up on us, but uh, I can assure you there was no chance that they were going to get past. <laughs> What an incredible race, and we've still got two to go. Join us after the break to catch up with this man and the Superstock, SVX, and Pro Stock Vs. back to Florida's Space Coast. Before the break, you saw Pro Floors from New Zealand win an awesome Supercat battle. And next up, it's the Superstock, SVX and Pro Stock V. But first, let's catch up with Travis Pastrana, who will compete in this race and find out what happened on his first time in a powerboat. Dude, it was so awesome. We got in the boat and we were going about 80 and Kevin looks over and he goes, I'm dropping the hammer and just pins it. That thing took off. I was like, holy cow. It was so much fun. Unfortunately, we blew another motor. But JRA Boats came over and said, hey, look, we're run, run, running in a different class, but we want to see you out there. Uh, we have a boat that we we're going to try to sell. So just trying to break this one. And uh, we found another throttle man, and we're in. It'll be fascinating to see how Travis takes the water. And so let's go straight away and join our race commentary team of Mike Yowalski and Martin Sanborn. Thanks, Kevin. The boats are on the race course. We actually have three races going to happen at the same time here. We've got Super Stock, we've got Pro Stock V, and we've got Super V Extreme on this little over five-mile race course. And it looks like the first start is going to be for our Super Stocks, Martin, and we've got 10+. plus. This is a huge fleet for Super Stock. These are all identical engines. The catamarans are all about 30 feet in length, and we have a green flag. We are underway here in Cocoa Beach for the Super Stocks. And looks to be a very clean start here from our vantage point. Looks like off to an early lead on the inside is Shadow Pirates. Coming up on the outside is CR Racing. Shadow Pirate on the inside, uh, CR Racing coming up on their outside. In the middle there is Frank and Jimmy's in the brand new Victory Cat. And I'm taking a look at Shadow Pirate being challenged right now on the inside. Now the rules are they have to maintain their lane all the way through turns one, two, three, and four, that big loop at the north end of the race course. So CR can't come over. They've got to hold their lane as we go to our start in Super V Extreme. Yeah, the green flag now flying for the Super Vs. And you can see we've got six plus boats out there in this class. So there's going to be a lot of boats once all three of these starts out there on this course. Looks out to an early start is going to be boatfolder.com as we go on board with Steve and Steven Kildall. Now you've got to wonder, there's got to be some lab traffic issues as we head toward the latter stages of this market. That's one of the reasons they start the faster boats ahead of the slower boats. And here we have our pro stock Vs. And out to an early start is Lily Sport Boats. That is the hurricane of awesomeness. Now one of the things I'm looking at, the Super V and the SVX, they look pretty identical. They really are identical boats. The difference is the power. In the V-Extremes, those guys have upwards of 670 horsepower. The other boats are 525 based in the uh, Pro Stock V, so they're a little more evenly matched. And we have a boat that's already out of the heat. Phase 5 is done before they really even get started, Mike. Boy, I'll tell you what, tough break there for Phase 5. Martin, we got three onboard cameras with this entire fleet out there as we go with the uh, start here. We've got the 
boat floater on the deuce. They'll have an onboard camera, as will boat number 13, North Myrtle Beach RV Resort, and boat number S111, Reliable Services. We look at our leader in super stock. It is Shadow Pirate. There's our leader in pro stock B. That is boatfloater.com. The father and son team of Steve and Stephen Kildall as we go on board with them. You can see the speeds that are running right in the center of their GPS are about 87 miles an hour. Here is Fast Boys. And yeah, Fast Boys looks like they're doing a little chine walking all the way through the track. Little loose. These boats have a tendency to do that. They're a single engine V-bottom. You can see there's a hole right there as they go into that head seat, but Fast Boys running strong right now. Yeah, it looks like where that turn is right there, that's exactly where the break is, and that could cause some issues for some of these boats. Right now we have Shadow Pirate out front. Performance Boat Centers actually move themselves into second place. Frank and Jimmy's propellers on the outside in third. That Performance Boat Center boat is a brand new boat with a rookie team, although Myra Coyle can hardly be called a rookie. But Rusty Williams and Myra have not run before, and they are currently in second place as we look at Travis Pastrana in his debut in a powerboat. Well, I'll tell you what, Travis Pastrana, FMX star, first one to ever do a double backflip, broke all of Evil Knievel's record last year, and he is having a ball out here at Coco this weekend. I'll tell you what, my experience is that guys that transition the best into this sport from any other sport come from the motorcycle realm. So I think he's going to be right at home if he if he's having fun out there look for Travis to be tough well you can see that boat in and out of the water and uh, he's used to taking that type of beat and being a motocross pilot here we have our second place and third place battle we have Typhoon on the outside and play it again on the inside Randy Schluss one of the old time racers been around for a long time but he is about to get passed by play it again on the inside yeah great battle as they head south down that back straightaway and a beautiful day for racing here in Coco this is RNS Racing on the inside. That's Kyle Dietzen and Howard Richardson, a couple of guys that were around in the Factory 2 class racing days out here in Pro Stock V. Well, I'll tell you, this race starting to uh, come to a close here. If they're going to make a move, now is the time to do it. Shadow Pirates still in the lead. And that was Travis Pastrana coming by. He's about to get some lapped faster boat traffic coming up behind. Here is Shadow Pirate. They continue to lead these guys again. They got a great start at the beginning, Mike. Never look back. Well, I'll tell you what, it's all about how you get through that lap traffic, especially with these longer races, these longer tracks here, a 5.7 mile track. And oftentimes it makes a difference whether you're a winner or loser on how you get past them back markers. On board the number S111 Reliable, this is Ryan Beckley's boat. And the checkered flag is out. Shadow Pirate's gonna take the win here in Superstock. A lot of great racing out there in race number two, our super stock class today. As we take a look at our top six, congratulations to Shadow Pirate. They were the big winners of the weekend. Performance Boat Center ended up in second and rounding out your top three, FJ Propeller. And let's take a look at our results in Pro Stock V. The win went to Fast Boys Racing, followed by LSB Racing, Play It Again, Done Deal JRC, Octane, and North Myrtle Beach RV Resort. It was a great race, it was beautiful weather. My team put the boat together. We had a great team, a great day. We started off in uh, third place there with amongst all the other 12 racers and ended up coming into first and did a great job. I was super excited and it just all worked out well for us today. And let's take a look at our results in Super V Extreme. The win went to Boat Floater, followed by Sheriff Lobo, Sunprint Management, JRA Boat Sales, and Marker 17. What a weekend of racing. Earlier, the production classes took to the Coco Surf, and here's how they got on. We have a green flag. We are underway here in Coco Beach. Here's our battle in Class 6. They are deck to deck on the front straightaway. Here is our leader in Class 5, the number 516 JT Bronx Phantom. And Simmons Marine should be coming around to the checkered flag as they are currently your leader in class four. And there's the checkered flag. So the win in class five is gonna go to JT Bronx Phantom as they cross the start finish line. And here's our battle in class six. On the inside is Boom Shakalaka on the outside is New Wave Marine. And once again, here is our winner in Class 5, JT Bronx Fano. Let's take a look at the results in Class 4. The win goes to Simmons Marine, followed by Team Raven, 
Team Woody and the Dollhouse. In Class 5, the win goes to JT Bronx Phantom, followed by Two Cruel, Disabled American Veterans Specialized Racing, and Big Dreams Racing. In Class 6, there was a great race, but a breakout penalty, so the win goes to New Wave Marine Rum Runner, followed by Throttle Therapy and Yabba Dabba Doo. We'll be back with more racing and the fastest boats in offshore, Class 1, right after this. The APBA Offshore Championship on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Mercury Racing. Wide open. Welcome back to Coco Beach, where it's been action all the way so far, with a brilliant win from the Kiwis in the super competitive Supercat race, and Travis Pastrana mixing it up in his first ever outing in a powerboat. But now it's time for the big one. We heard earlier how Class 1 is no longer about the money. The new Mercury 1100 engines have put all the teams on a level playing field. So it's not about the bucks, but it's going to be all about the bang. Let's hear from some of the teams excited about the season ahead. I am Salem Al Adedi from Dubai. I am driver of Victory Team Boat. My name is Isa Al Ali uh, from Dubai. Uh, I am in Victory Team. I am Throttleman. Uh, today we are start our uh, new season in uh, this beautiful uh, place, Coco Beach, and uh, we are very happy to be part of this event. Uh, I won Victory Team in 2010, 2016 second uh, world champion. Uh, 2017 I take the champion with uh, Salem. It's a bit exciting for, to be uh, joining this race with uh, new rules. We don't know who will be the best. My goal is uh, to be take a champion. I cannot say anything till uh, race to read uh, what, uh, what is it. I am ready, my boat ready, my teams, everything. I will see. We've got the best boats here in the world, the best teams here in the world, um, and they're coming to our back door, so really looking forward to it. Okay, so I have the steering wheel, so I decide where we go, and Steve decides how fast. So uh, I'm trying to keep us out of trouble on the corners and making sure we actually come up to the marks, uh, and then Steve tries to get as much power as he can down for every single lap. Super important, that, you know, the communication between the throttle man and the driver. It's probably the only sport in the world where you're doing something like that. So it really is a team sport in the boat. You know, you 100% rely on who you're in the boat with, and you've got to have 100% confidence in what they're doing. We're the premier, we're the best, most professional race team uh, in America. We have the same 1100 class one uh, race engines. The racing, you know, we're gonna have to work hard this year, as will all the other professional teams, um, you know, to win. It'll be interesting, like James said, you know, there's a lot of new boats out here that we're racing against and no one knows how good the other boats are, so tomorrow's going to be a lot of, you know, cat and mouse finding out what's going on, finding out, you know, which boats are fast in which conditions, so it's pretty exciting right now. The boat was uh, originally out of Italy, it was built in the UAE a few years back, it's all carbon. Uh, it's the same as Geico, Victory, Sabo, so they're all the same. It comes down to the reliability of the rigging, which we should be good. Last year we won the Australian Series and uh, we uh, come here and it's, it's great. Great grip background, great organisation, really looking forward to it. Uh, me and Dario, we started racing in XCAT together uh, four years ago. And uh, we bought a new boat uh, two years ago and uh, we don't lose any races, so... Uh, we are confident the boat is perfect, the engine is new. We have all the, all the sets we use, it's everything new. So I think uh, we, are, we are in the game for sure for, for the championship. Giovanni sounding confident there for Team 222. So let's get the most competitive ever season underway. Mikey Young and Martin Sanborn are standing by. So take it away, guys. 
Thank you, Kevin. As we get ready for Class 1 USA Racing, we are on board Team Geico. That's Steve Curtis closing the hatch. James Shepard getting himself all hooked up as we get ready to go with the fastest offshore boats in the world. Here is 222 Offshore. You know, the great thing about this, Mike, is this, as Gary said, is a true international series of boats we have out here on the race course as they're coming up towards the start finish line. That's right, biggest boats you're gonna see all weekend, final race of the weekend, and as you uh, spoke of, a lot of foreign drivers out there. We have Italy represented, Norway, the United Kingdom, United States. We have boats from all over out there in what is one of the premier classes in all of powerboat racing. Well, I believe we're just about ready to go green as we are six wide coming down the front straightaway. And here we go, green flag. We are off and running 222 on the inside. Victory trying to get a jump on them, but they right now are a little bit behind the 222 boat. But look at Geico come up alongside the Lucas Oil boat. And they are side by side, rail to rail. This is what powerboat racing is all about. You know, I'm a V-bottom driver. I love seeing V-bottoms out there running with the catamarans. They always accelerate really strong, but once the cats get running, there is no way to get them. Oh, look at the Lucas oil boat heading down that straightaway. Oh, it looks like a drunken sailor on a 24-hour pass. Well, if you ever wanted to know what chine walking is, that's it. From side to side like that, that is a brutal ride as we're on board Zabo right now as they drive by Lucas oil on the outside. Well, an incredible battle as uh, we see three wide coming down that front straightaway as all the drivers head north. 2-2-2 two, two, two on the inside. Victory trying to carry speed on the outside. Geico is way on the outside. They're all required to maintain their lane all the way through the entire north end turn until they head southbound. Then they can change lanes. Yeah, very uh, similar to what a commitment buoy would be with the APBA. Zabo right now trying to get out of that whitewash. That is not the fastest water. It, it, it's really turbulent on propellers. You lose your efficiency. And right now it looks like we have Victory Team is running in second. There is our leader, 222 Offshore. That is from a team from Italy and Australia. They are out front right now. Boy, and you can see uh, just how rough it is out there as you see him bobbling around inside the canopy. Darren Nicholson and Giovanni Carpatella out front in 222 offshore. Victory trying to come up on the inside right now. These boats capable of speeds upwards of 150 miles an hour. They've got a little right hand dog leg uh, that they've got to navigate on the right hand side of the turn buoy. Then they go up into their big right hand turn at the south end of the race course. And it looks like Victory going to have position when they get to that south end. And here comes Geico. Geico's just to the inside hip of the victory team. Not exactly the best place. They go through the rooster tail now. They decide they don't, they're don't. they not going to get left the lane, so there's no reason to eat all that spray. And instead, it looks like 222 completely hoses down the victory team. Victory team goes right through that rooster tail. 222 ends up way out front right now as they make their way through the rest of the south end turns. Yeah, 222 looking really strong out there. They pulled out, gave themselves a little bit of breathing room and put a little bit of real estate between them and second place. But look at the difference right here as Victory Team squared the turn off a little bit tighter and make it look like they're side by side. Right now, although 222 still has a bit of an edge, but Victory made a fantastic turn on that end of the race course and closed up a lot of that real estate they lost going through the rooster tail. Yeah, driver showing some mad skills there as they're drag racing down the front straightaway here in Cocoa Beach. 222 on the outside, victory on the inside. Let's see if 222 gives them a courtesy lane as they get down to the north end of the race course. Looks like they don't have enough room to completely close the door on them. And I wouldn't expect Nicholson to really give him an opportunity. He's going to stick that nose up there. Giovanni Carpatella on the sticks as they're running upwards of 150 miles an hour here on that front straightaway. Wow, look at that side by side. And that is really hairy. You're going 150 miles per hour. You're in the surf. Uh, what's going through your mind, Mark? Well, right now, I'm pretty happy if I'm the victory team. They just drove by the 222 boat. Looks like 222 is dropping off fairly quickly. They have a problem. But I can tell you, when you're driving that close to the shore break, you hit a little bit of a quartering sea. That's where you see these boats popping up and twitching in the air from left to right. Now Geico drives by 222 offshore. Clearly from the start of the race, 222 offshore is off that pace they were. See that little bit of air? It is bumpier than it looks out there, but these guys, they're used to running in this kind of condition. You can see just how perfectly level the boats fly when they're running. Victory team right now out front, but Geico charging hard from behind, and they're on the outside line. Yeah, don't count Geico out yet. 222 looked very strong for the first couple laps. Uh, sorry to see them drop off all the way back into third place. We saw Geico make a square off turn. They just threw on the brakes as they dive into the turn. We have a battle going on, but a lot more racing here in Cocoa Beach.
Barton, we've had one heck of a weekend. We have. We've had a couple of lead changes right now. 2-2-2 started out in the lead, but they clearly had a mechanical problem as they've dropped off. Geico is now trying to chase down the victory team. They are on the outside as they head towards the south end of the race course, trying to stay out of that spray. they got to make a run. they got to get up to where they can take advantage and carry speed around that turn because that victory team boat is running strong. You know, Geico definitely didn't have the best of starts. They came out in about third, fourth place, but they've been able to work their way through the pack. You know, the advantage Geico has is they have experience running these turbocharged motors as opposed to the supercharged motors. And as Gary was talking about earlier, they've got a lot of experience doing their gear ratio and propeller setup so that they can really take advantage of these new Mercury 1100 engines. Victory now still running on the outside there, out front, and they really control the lane. They can kind of push Geico around. Let's see how Geico handles it. But here comes Geico coming up strong. Boy, did they find some speed, Mike. They are hooked up on the outside as they head south right now. And again, they are rail to rail as Geico trying to make a pass, working on the outside, splitting up just a little bit. Not going to be near as dangerous if he tries to sweep hard on the outside and square off that turn. You know, he held that inside lane right around the dog leg, but now he's on the outside going around turns at the south end of the race course. Let's see if he can carry that speed and get around. They're now deck to deck as they enter the southbound turns. Geico now out front a little bit, but look at a great turn by Victory as they square it off. They are side by side all the way through this turn. Boy, you really have to trust the next boat driver next to you. No doubt, especially when you're going in a following sea heading towards the beach. Now, Geico squares it off and kind of forces Victory to turn as well. But Victory's been turning pretty sharp, so I'm not, I don't think that's bothering him at all. And here they go. It's going to be a drag race to the start-finish line. Victory has the inside lane, but it looks like Geico is carrying boat speed. Boy, I'll tell you, these fans here in Cocoa Beach really getting treated to some great racing this weekend. Look at them getting air. Now, they're running a little bit over a diagonal the way the sea is quartering and the waves are coming into the beach. And Geico now has them by a boat like this. They come to the start-finish line. Geico pulling ahead of victory and into the lead here in class one. Wow, I'll tell you what, one heck of a race for both uh, driver and throttle man there for Geico. As you can see, still deck to deck as we head to the north section of the track. And it's still Geico by a boat lane. And the white flag is out. Geico is in the lead as we start the final lap here in Cocoa Beach. Victory team in second place. Geico has now moved to the inside as they move to the north end of the race course on this final lap. And Martin, this is what it's all about. The white flag is flying. This is where champions are made. Will Geico be able to hold on to it? Yeah, it doesn't matter how many laps you lead. You got to lead that last lap as victory goes way wide on this one. The Geico boat holds that inside lane and picks up even more distance as they make their way around the rest of the north end turn. Well, they are in control right now of their own destiny. Lucas Oil coming across the start finish line now as well. They're also on the final lap as they drive by the Zabo boat. And look at that very tight there. Last lap as uh, you take a look out from Zabo. Zabo clearly having some problems not running up to speed right now. And here comes the Geico boat. One straight away to go. Heading towards the start finish line. The checkered flag is out. And Geico is going to take the win. And look at the distance they put on on that last lap over the victory team. Congratulations to the Geico team. And especially to Steve Curtis and James Shepard, the entire Geico team. They did their homework during the offseason. Steve Curtis, what a great way to come to the USA in Class 1. Let's take a look at our results. The win goes to Miss Geico. Victory in second, followed by 222 Racing, Lucas Oil, and Zabo. Well, it wasn't easy. Just the finish wasn't easy. It was pretty rough out there. We had a, didn't have a particularly good start. We, we drew lane five, so it was really bad coming into the first bend. Uh, but after about three or four laps, we managed to get in the lead and to pace ourselves a bit. But it, it was a good race. They pushed us hard all day long. I felt that we, uh, we were both working hard out there, but what, but what a great team. I mean, the boat was superbly presented by uh, all the Geico guys and girls, and uh, it just it delivered. It was very reliable, uh, felt very safe, and just a, you know, a fantastic, fantastic race boat. Well, what a brilliant start to the fantastic new season of powerboat racing. Next time you see us, we'll be in Sarasota for the annual 4th of July Spectacular. And we'd love it if you can join us there. So until then, from all of us here in Cocoa Beach, see ya.
side-by-side -side battle. And Bass Boys looks like they're doing a little chime walking all the way through the track. Carpatella on the sticks as they're running upwards of 150 miles an hour here on that front straightaway. The checkered flag is out and Geico is going to take the win.